Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University. What is the deal with the science of reading? This is going to be part of a webinar that's going to take place April 27th, 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. If you're watching this after this date, obviously it's a recording. But you can get this and lots of other stuff at my website. You'll see podcasts, YouTubes, other stuff. And you can go to the Reading Instruction Show and see lots of podcasts here. So this webinar is going to be in four parts. This is a recording of just the first one, Defining the Science of Reading. And lots of the misunderstanding about the science of reading, and there is a lot of misunderstanding, comes from not quite understanding science and reading science. Now, Tim Shanahan, I don't agree with him on everything, but he has some good stuff out there. He's conducted a lot of research and done a lot of writing. A major scholar uh, was a part of the National Reading Panel report. I like his definition and description of what science of reading is or what he calls reading science. He defined reading science or the science of reading is applied research conducted in a classroom using control and experimental research. That is reading science and only strategies that have proven to be effective by applied research conducted in a classroom using controlled and experimental uh, research can be said to be science of reading strategies. We'll delve into that again, but there are two types of science, essentially basic science and applied science. And this is again, well known, but uh, Dr. Shanahan did a nice job of this, uh, explaining this. Basic science is the research that's done apart from the classroom, used to create understanding, used to create data that's used to design theories. And a theory, as we'll find out in another podcast, another video, is a way to explain a set of facts and understand phenomena. Theories are incredibly important, but these are all types of basic research not done in a classroom, brain imaging, that's basic research, eye movement research, miscue analysis, priming studies. These are all examples that help us understand reading and the reading process done not in a classroom, but used to create data that helps us understand reading and the reading process. Applied research is done in the setting in which it will ultimate, uh, ultimately be used. It's to see how something functions in the real world. It's done in the classroom to see if something is effective. Applied research, the goal is to identify causal relationships. One thing causes another thing to happen. Method A causes reading to occur. If you do this, that will happen. If we do this, more reading will happen or less reading will happen. That is applied research to find a cause and effect. Now, reading research is, again, I'm going to say this a couple of times, it's applied research done in the classroom using control and experimental groups. That's controlled experimental research. And I'll show you that in just a minute. But this is what Dr. Shanahan said to me. A science of reading, if we're talking about education, requires that our prescriptions for teaching be tempered by rigorous instructional evaluations. If a claim hasn't been tried out and found effective, then the claims, no matter how heartfelt, aren't part of reading science. And I think we can all agree with that so far. Hopefully you're all with me. Now, I think this is a limited view of educational research or of reading science. It creates this people. Only one type of research is to be used and, and it excludes a lot of other types of research. You're viewing reading reality through a tiny people and you're ignoring a lot of data. And what often happens with the science of reading is they cherry pick research studies to look at. They cherry pick research studies to review and apply. And that's not reading science. Reading science doesn't cherry pick. Reading science looks at a wide body of research and types of reading research. 
but I'm okay with this limited view if it's consistently applied. And I'll hit that again. But let us first understand what is research in this in the first place. And don't assume everyone has the same concept. Research, science is a verb. Research is a process. It is to science, to do something. Research is the process of, our, or science is the process of asking questions and using data to answer those questions. Science is a verb. Science is a verb. It's to do something. Research uses a systematic process to collect and analyze data. That's what, what separates data collection from research is the systematic method. And a system is a fixed plan based on a set of principles that are generally agreed upon by the field. And the field of reading research has a set of principles and guidelines. The research method is the specific systematic process used to gather and analyze data. That is a research method. Now, there is no scientific method, and I know that will freak people out. There are methods of science, methods of science. Science includes, by the way, you know, the scientific method, qualitative and quantitative research, and we'll cover that in just a minute, observational research, ethnographic research, descriptional research, all different types, all different methods of science. There's no such thing as the method of science. Um, just a basic overview of qualitative versus quantitative research. Quantitative is what most people think about when you say the scientific method. Again, it's to create and to look for causal relationships. One thing causes another thing to happen. In the typical study, you give a measure up front to show both groups are the same. You have a treatment group and a control group. Both groups are the same, absolutely the same. You try to control all the variables except one, which is the treatment, and then you do a post measure. So if you had your two groups and you gave method A here, no method there, and then measure, if, if there were a difference, you could say, ah, method A caused the difference. So this controlled experimental research using groups, you want to isolate all the variables except one. In the case of reading, it's often phonics instruction or something else. So you can say, oh, they were the same except for the type of instruction given. So it's the type of instruction that caused the difference. And of course, you always want to look at the groups. That's why it's important to have a, a peer review so you can look to see if the groups, if the groups were equal to start out with. Single subject design, similar, you have one group and you have a measure up front. You give the treatment a measure at the end. If there's a statistically significant difference between pre and post, you can say with some degree of confidence that the treatment may have caused the difference. Of course, in education, there's a lot of different variables. Maturity is one of them. Simply by being exposed or growing during the year, they are going to grow in whatever subject area. That's why sample sizes, the number of students in the sample, all, all impacts the quality of that study. And again, that's why we have peer review so people can analyze the study to make sure we're not being biased or putting our finger on the scale. There are different types of quantitative research, and you can see them right here, all different types of quantitative. You try to quantify reality. Now, qualitative research, and here's the thing about quantitative research, by controlling the variables, you are impacting the very reality you're trying to study. By controlling all the variables, you're making that an unrealistic reality. Qualitative research tries to accept reality as it is 
and study what's happening here. And yes, there can be causal relationships here. And I like to use Joan Goodall looking at monkeys or apes or chimpanzees in the wild to see what's happening, to understand. One type of research is not better than the other. The research method should be determined by the type of question asked. Some questions require qualitative research. Some questions require qualitative research. And here we see a qualitative researcher going into a classroom trying to understand what's happening, not controlling or manipulating the environment, but taking it as it is. Different types of qualitative research methods. And I don't want to get too far off into the weeds on, uh, on a lecture on research methods. That's not the purpose. Just know that there are a variety of methods of science. Now, research is different from collecting data. Oftentimes, think tanks or groups with a political agenda will collect data and say, ah, research shows that. Research is not research unless and until it has been subject to blind peer review and published in an academic journal. For example, I could collect data to show that I'm the greatest professor in the world. That doesn't mean that it's research. I cannot say that research proves I'm the best professor in the world. Because what defines a professor? And what type of measures am I using? I could maybe select course evaluations. I could have anecdotal evidence. How about scores on exams? Would that deter, say I'm a, a good professor, the number of books? These are all different types of data I could collect, but I would have to send this off to blind peer review and people would say, wait a minute, the number of YouTube views, that has nothing to do with your effectiveness. That's not a valid measure of your ability to be a good professor. And how do you define a good professor? Is it someone who publishes a lot, someone who teaches effectively, someone who does service? These are all the types of questions that get asked when research is uh, presented, subjected to blind peer review. Research is not research unless and until it has been subjected to blind peer review. Blind peer review, this is the process. You do your research, you create a manuscript, you send it to a journal. The journal editor takes your name off it, hence blind, and sends it out to experts in your area. Now, as an expert in literacy, I should not be asked to evaluate uh, research on some social studies or on uh, uh, the economy or something outside my field. Editors send it to experts in the field on the subject area and experts in the type of methodology used. It's blind. They don't know who the author is. The author does not know who the reviewer is. They decide whether to accept, reject, or accept with revisions. And they're checking to make sure that your finger is not on the scale, that it's everything is correct in the way it should be. Now, often we hear this from the science of reading. Research proves that. It has been proven that. It shows, it demonstrates. Research has proven that whole language has been debunked. And there is no single study that proves anything. That's not the way science works. Science can prove or disprove a hypothesis, but science creates little data points, data dots that are used to create theories, which are used to explain and understand phenomena. Reliable science is peer-reviewed, reproducible. You can falsify it, yes or no. Now, using research, and I, this is the only analogy I could find. I know it's probably not good to use rifle and gun things in today's climate, but I grew up in rural Wisconsin where we did deer hunting, and every year we would sight in our rifle because it could get bumped. The scope could get bumped during the winter. I did not take a single shot or one or two shots and say, ah, oh, that's where the rifle is shooting because you want the, the crosshairs to line up where the bullet is actually shooting. So you'd have to move your scope. You don't take one or two shots. You take a lot of shots to get a sense of where the pattern is. 
And based on this pattern, I go, oh, it's about here. It needs to go up and to the right because you have outliers. You could be shaking or something could happen. In the same way, you don't look at a single research study and say, ah, this proves that like you look at a lot, a wide variety of, of research to get a sense of what the research says about something. Often science of reading advocates find one study and go, aha, it has been proven that. And that's a misunderstanding of what research is. Science of reading says you should only use strategies that have been shown to be effective using applied research that's research conducted in actual classrooms using controlled experimental methods. Controlled experimental methods. Now, the U.S. Department of Education, 2002, uh, scientifically based research is this. Systematic empirical, that means it can be observed and measured, observation or experiment, rigorous data analysis, hypothesis, uh, reliable, reliable and valid data. Yes, this is a valid measure of reading. Okay. Evaluated using experimental or quasi-experimental design. Experimental design, you have one group, then I'll show you what quasi is. Appropriate controls, preference for random assignment experiments. All right. Experimental, true experiment has uh, the subjects randomly assigned to control and experimental groups. We can't do that in education because students are in classrooms. So we use what's called quasi-experimental designs, which means that you keep them in their groups, but you use some pre-test measure to determine or to, uh, to uh, determine that the groups are equal, to show that the groups are relatively the same at the beginning. Uh, experimental studies are presented in sufficient detail. We can repeat them. We know exactly what you did. And here's the one then accepted by a peer-reviewed journal or approved by a panel of independent experts. I don't like that because what is an expert? There's various experts on this. Comparably rigorous, objective, and scientific review. That is important. And again, I could live with the interpretation of the science of reading or reading science, I could live with that interpretation of only applied research using controlled experimental methods. I could live with that if it were correctly and consistently applied. But one of my problems with science of reading advocates is that they cherry pick research and that's not what science is. Science does not start with a belief and look for data to reinforce the belief. Science does not ignore data and studies that do not line up with your paradigm. Real science allows views to evaluate over time or to evolve over time. All right, this has been the end of part one, just getting a sense of what science is and the science of reading. We'll be looking at seven questionable science of reading claims in the next video. And this will show why that it is my assumption, my belief, my conclusion that the science of reading is more an ideology because it doesn't consistently or correctly apply the same uh, criteria, the same uh, scientific claims. It does not correctly apply the basics of research.